What's up guys, my name is Technobo here for Troubleshoot and today I've got a really simple video for you that is nonetheless incredibly important and useful for you to know. Basically, if you work with video, audio, if you create music, if you put music from your PC onto an MP3 player, your phone, or if you just generally need to convert music, you're probably used to going onto Google, going into a free website, uploading a file, downloading it, putting in a ton of effort for a little to no return. Well, in fact, it's incredibly simple to change music from one format to another, lower the quality, decrease the file size, etc, etc, without having to do any downloads past the initial one. What am I talking about? Well, today I'm going to be talking about FFmpeg, which I've covered in a previous video of mine on how to install it, and that'll be linked in the description down below. Assuming that you already have it installed, if you were to hit start R, type in CMD, enter, and then type in FFmpeg, hit enter, you'd see this information pop up here instead of an error that looks like this saying it's not a recognized command. As long as you see all of this information up here or something similar to it, that means you have FFmpeg successfully installed. Now, what exactly is FFmpeg? Well, it's great for converting a video and audio from one format to another, changing it, adding effects, filters, etc, etc. But today, I'm going to be working with this little MP3 file inside of this folder over here. As you can see, it plays perfectly normally. It's a three minute song that is around about five megabytes. It's already in MP3. However, I'm going to go ahead and change this into a different format, such as AAC, for example, which is a popular format when it's combined with an MP4 video that'll work properly. If you were to upload it to YouTube, it usually has H.264 normal video and then AAC audio instead of MP3. But that's just one of the many, many examples you can convert to practically any kind of container, whether it's MP3, WAV, OGG, FLAC, AAC, AIFF, etc, etc. There's basically an infinite number of these containers that you can convert to and from. So the simplest way to do this is to slowly double click on the file you want to go ahead and convert. Control A, Control C. Control A selects everything, Control C copies it. As long as you see .mp3 afterwards or something similar, then this is going to work properly. If you don't see file extensions, at the very top go to view and make sure the file name extensions checkbox is ticked. Then you should see the name of your song .wave, .mp3, etc, etc. Slowly double click Control A, Control C. Then at the very top, where it says the folder name, we'll click there and we'll type in CMD and hit enter. Now inside of this new window, I'll simply type FFmpeg space hyphen I for input space quotation mark control V to paste quotation mark. So now we've said that FFmpeg, this is the input file that we'd like to convert space inverted commas. And this is where the name of your output file goes. So you could name it anything dot wave dot AAC, etc, etc. But usually what I do is I paste in the previous name, I press backspace to get rid of the existing extension, and I'll type in another one that I want it to go to. So I'll change this to a wave. W A V and close the quotation marks, then hit enter and it will begin transcoding. Now, obviously, WAVE is a much less compressed format than MP3. So as you can see, the file size went from four megabytes or just under five to about 31. If we were to double click on the WAVE, click through it, you'd see it functions exactly the same as the MP3 above it. It's just now that it's in a less compressed format, which is much more compatible with a lot more devices. And of course, the inverse is true. If you picked a more compressed format, you could of course convert it to that or from that. So if I were to take this giant wave over here, tab back into the command prompt window, FFmpeg space hyphen I space quotation mark, paste in the wave's name, close quotation marks, space, do it again. I'll take out the wave and type in AAC, closing quotation marks, enter. It'll go ahead and compress it from a wave into an AAC file, which is two megabytes or just under three compared to the original file of five megabytes and the uncompressed wave of 31 megabytes. So of course, compressing your MP3s into AACs would be more space efficient, but it may change the quality ever so slightly because of the way that they are encoded. However, this is by far the easiest way to convert files on your local PC with no extra downloads, no extra software. And in fact, you don't even need to go ahead and open up this command prompt window. You can even type the command in straight up here. So FFmpeg space hyphen I quotation mark, paste in the name, quotation mark, quotation mark again, paste it in. And I'll change the wave to say an MP4, which will have no video. It'll only have audio. I'll hit enter. 
it'll go ahead and convert. And there we have a .mp4. As you can see, it's around about the same 2.8 megabytes. That's because FFmpeg has changed it from an MP3 to AAC audio and then put it inside of an MP4. If I double click, the video should be black or there should be no video at all and it will just beat the audio and it's working perfectly as you'd expect. Now, of course, that being said, this is an incredibly powerful piece of software and we can get a lot more in depth. But before we get there, you just need to understand that just because the file size is bigger, it doesn't necessarily mean that the quality is better. You cannot get more quality out of a file. You can only get less or equal quality out of a file. That's why this MP3 of five megabytes is probably just the same as this AAC of 2.8 megabytes. But this WAV file over here that's 30 megabytes is definitely not any better than the MP3 file over here. You have data and you can only remove it or copy it. You can't create data just by guessing. That being said, let's go ahead and investigate some of the other settings we have. Say so you want to change bitrate. How exactly do we do that? If we were to go ahead and give our question a Google FFmpeg audio bitrate, clicking the first link takes us to the FFmpeg wiki for AAC. Let's say we want to go to MP3. We can simply type it in at the very top and replace it. Then we have this over here. So as you can see, MP3 uses something called VBR, variable bitrate. There is also CBR for constant bitrate. However, this is a bit more in depth. Basically, setting a QA, which is for quality audio, to one of these numbers over here will give us plus minus a bitrate range of 45 to 85 kilobits per second or 320, etc., etc. And this is usually what we'll be using. So all you need to do is have a look at the very top over here at the sample. So we'll copy hyphen codec A, this name, and we'll copy all the way to Q scale A, copy it over there. We'll tab into our CMD window, go back to between these two and paste it in, space, space, and we'll go back one just so we can enter our text in here. So let's say I want the absolute worst quality to show the biggest difference, 45 to 85 kilobits per second, I'll use QA of nine. So you can type it in as such, codec a lib mp3 lame, which is the standard mp3 codec, Q scale a nine. Now, of course, they also say that you can use Q colon A. So I'll go ahead and use that just because it's a little bit easier. So if we go ahead and hit enter, it'll go ahead and convert our input into our output at our specified quantity. So looking back in the folder, if we were to get rid of the rest of these files, you'll see that we went from just over five megabytes to 2.2 megabytes MP3 audio. If we open it up, it does sound quite a bit more muted and not as good. And that's probably because we lowered the bitrate. It's just under half of the file size, meaning that we've given up a lot of quality, but this conversion has actually worked. If I were to open up a tool such as Media Info, we can get some more detailed descriptions on this. So for the first file, the input file, you can see we're around about 217 kilobits per second. If we go ahead and check our output file, you can see we're around about 78.5 kilobits per second, which is right at the upper end of the 45 to 85 scale that they show at the very bottom over here. Now, of course, if you don't want to use VBR, you can use hyphen BA and put in your own kilobit settings. But of course, this is more for you to discover. How exactly would you do that? Well, you do it very similarly. I'll just clear the screen with CLS and hit up twice to go to our previous command. And I'll change QA to BA for bitrate audio, and I'll set it to say 56K, meaning 56 kilobits per second. I'll hit enter. When it asks me if I want to overwrite the output file, I'll type in Y and hit enter. Once it's done, you should see the output file is a little bit smaller now. It's now 1.7 megabytes instead of 2.2. The quality has also drastically decreased. However, we've successfully lowered the bitrate of our audio. Either way, that's probably as much as you need to know. There's a lot more to this tool, but it's way too in-depth to go to in one video, so I'll leave it here as is. If you'd like to see more on this topic, make sure to comment down below and leave a like on it. Thank you all for watching. My name's been Tech Number here for Troubleshoot. I hope this video helped you out, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.